Petty manages the winding course with deftness, putting his red and blue racer strongly into contention from the very start. The Winston Cup Grand National NASCAR Championship involves 30 races at tracks from the Carolinas to California, from Michigan to Florida. It takes 12,300 miles of racing to cover the circuit. And as the season opens, the duel for the checkered flag is clearly between Petty, who sports a traditional bold number 43, and Cale Yarborough, who wears a big number 11 on his Chevrolet racing machine. This time, Yarborough makes it to the checkered flag. He beats out Richard Petty for the win. One month later, and clear across the nation, Daytona Beach is the scene of the next stock car challenge. This is the Indianapolis of the South, the world's biggest stock car race, where drivers try harder for victory than at any other track. The pretty girls, the stirring music, and the holiday festivity of the big race are here. Cale Yarborough and Richard Petty compete again, and John J. Hooker, head of STP Corporation, is here to watch his friend and favorite. George Fulmer, a road racer, competes, as does David Pearson, champion Benny Parsons, and nearly two score other drivers. The cream of the nation's crop of racers, cinching safety straps, warming engines that throb with power. It's the final moment before a contest of speed and daring that will live in the history books of this all-American sport, where men and machines are pushed to the final ounce of endurance. The green flag signals go, and the top qualifiers, Petty, Pearson, Yarborough, Baker, and Ellison, forge to the front dueling at nearly 200 miles an hour in a test that will go for 500 miles on the steep bankings of Daytona. These men know and trust each other's actions and reactions at these blazing speeds. The maneuver of drafting, where cars follow tightly on the bumpers of others to better slice the air and reduce drag, is a skill the front runners practice with ease and daring. The early miles of any long race are a feeling out period. Who has the power to run in front, and who lacks it? Now Petty decides to test the leaders, and takes his place out in front of the speeding pack. King Richard the Racer is in command again. An engine blows. A spin in spilled oil. This brings out the yellow flag a signal for pit stops for fuel and tires. A top crew like Petty's can change two tires and gas the car all in 16 seconds with a windshield wash and driver refreshments thrown in. The speed of the pit crews can change the entire complexion of a race in a matter of seconds. Slower cars can catch the leaders. And no matter how short the time of his pit stop, Petty has now lost the advantage he gained during long laps of racing. His battle now is with Donnie Allison, whose die guard car has emerged from the rear to present a real threat to Petty. The two drivers, Petty in 43 and Donnie Allison in the steel blue number 88, are locked in a battle that brings the fans to their feet during the closing period of this long race for Daytona's laurels. A sudden swerve shows Petty has sliced a tire on track debris. He controls his machine and heads straight for his waiting pit crew. He gets a tire change, a fast load of fuel, and goes out. Now a yellow flag, result of another blown engine. And now Donnie Allison cuts a tire on his car. But luckless, he spins into the infield, far from a chance of help from his crew. The mishap signals the beginning of the end for Donnie. And Petty, saved by the nearness of his pit when his tire was cut, takes the checkered flag of victory. Cale Yarborough comes up to take second spot. And STP's John J. Hooker steps in to share the victory laurels with Petty. 
and the cheers ring out for the man the fans call King Richard. Luck deserts him at the next race. And a new challenge awaits him as the starting signal is given for the Carolina 500 at Rockingham, a track just a few miles from Petty's home in Level Cross, North Carolina. Here in the heart of grits and gravy country, the one-mile high-banked racing saucer is a far different course than the sweeping racing surface at Daytona. The battle for the championship has now been set up between Petty and Yarborough. Hale pushes to the front with speed to spare and a determination to add another race to his one win and two seconds. Petty lays back in third spot, content to survey the action up front, secure in the knowledge that he can move up whenever time is ripe for a burst of speed. He's locked in a furious duel with Bobby Ellison. The two old rivals are both equipped with skill and cunning, learned over thousands of racing miles. Petty pushes ahead and takes the lead as the duel continues between Allison's Coke machine and Petty's brightly painted STP car. Yarborough is still in the thick of it, and now the odds are evenly spread over the three contenders. Petty is running smooth and fast, things well in hand at a track where victory has been a familiar friend over the years. And Petty greets the checkered flag with Yarbrough in second spot and Allison finishing third. This victory scene starts to set the stage for a possible fifth Petty championship. He has two wins and two seconds. Yarbrough has one win, two seconds and a third. Another contender is Bobby Ellison running hard with the leaders in every race. This is real competition, Southern style. Now the scene is Bristol, Tennessee, another steeply banked speed bowl. Today, icy winds and falling snow make the pit crews miserable and the drivers wary of the snow slick racing surface. This looks like Cale Yarborough's day at the races. He heads for the front of the pack at the very beginning. And the smooth handling of the Chevrolet shows the shivering crowd that he has an edge on Petty and Allison, although Petty is snapping right at his heels. But wait, Ottinger, Dalton, and Petty crash on the front straight. All three cars are out. L.D. Ottinger in the 02 car lost it, then hit the wall in front of Petty. Richard nailed him broadside. As the two cars slid into turn one, Dean Dalton in number seven rammed full bore into Petty's door. All three drivers are okay, except for bruises, frayed tempers, and ruined checkbooks. There is no hope for Petty's return to this race. In the next five races, Petty had four losses and a win at North Wilkesboro. After a third place finish at Talladega, the Petty crew went back to the shop. The job ahead for the Petty man is now bigger than the repair of a wreck. There's the bigger problem of figuring out a way to make the Petty Dodge more competitive by engineering a shift in engines in mid-season. Rule changes have meant that the perfected Petty Big Bore Chrysler engines must now be choked down by small carburetors. Richard and his brother Maurice, who carries full responsibility for engine performance, debate their need for a new small block engine that will compete with the small Chevrolet and Ford motors being raced by competitors. The small engine concept is, without doubt, the way to go. But the costs of developing such a power plant and the time handicap of doing it in mid-season while trying to remain in running for the championship, requires round-the-clock work and massive infusions of money. The work goes on, and the petties keep racing. 
With the season more than half finished, the trail winds back across the country to Riverside, California, where the tricky road course offers a promise of victory to pay. Almost as soon as the cars get rolling, the season-long battle between Petty and Yarborough is joined again. The super-quick Chevy of Yarborough is a strong match. Kale now leads with five victories to Petty's four. Pearson's logged three wins in his Mercury. charges hard, but luck isn't with him today. He's into the pits. When the hood goes up, the problem's a big one. And Cale Yarborough goes on to log his sixth victory of the season. Petty comes back to win at Michigan. After three losses, he wins again at Atlanta and Pocono and makes it three straight at Talladega. Now Petty comes face to face with Yarborough again in the famed Southern 500, a classic race at Garlington, South Carolina. All the trappings of a racing festival are here as the race in Darlington is a week-long celebration. After the parades and beauty pageants end, Petty, with his new small engine working well, following an investment of $75,000, is ready to roll again, looking forward to race day at Darlington. Going onto the track this time, Petty and Yarborough are tied up with eight wins apiece. Pearson trails with five victories. Petty has six second places, Yarborough has three, and Pearson four. The Southern 500 will be a tiebreaker for the two leaders. Petty immediately gets into it with Buddy Baker, a former teammate. The two go at it hard, and Petty takes the lead. He wants a win this time, and his new engine is producing plenty of horsepower. It's been a costly adventure, but the investment is paying off in victories for the hard-riding young man from Randleman with a 39-tooth smile. Now trouble looms again. Jerry Hansen, in the number 73 Chevy, smacks the wall, bouncing into the path of Roy Main. Both drivers seem to be okay. And Bobby Allison squeaks his way into the lead in the action that follows the wall-banging mishap. Petty's in the wall. He was trying to pass a slower car and got pinched into the rail. His car crunched at both ends. He starts the long walk back to his pits. Through for the day. Another setback in his battle for the title. Now Bobby Allison leads the race and a car blows in front of Bobby. Bobby hits young Richie Panch and the wall. Cale Yarborough spins into the apron without damage. He's able to continue in his quest for the championship. Kale in car 11 and Allison in car 12 are attended by hustling pitmen, trying to save the day for both drivers. Allison's problems with bent metal are big ones. The race goes on at a whirling pace. That's Benny Parsons in 72 into the wall. Richie Pant right behind him. And David Pearson hits the wall. Panch can continue. Parsons stops in the infield. Nobody hurt. 
Now Kale duels in a final brush with young Daryl Walford, who looks like he might break into the winner's circle. But that's not to be. And so Yarborough takes another checkered flag and embraces a happy wife in victory lane. Petty comes back with a victory at Capital City and with another at Dover Downs. Now at Rockingham, Petty is in a good position to lock up the title. He and Yarborough each have 10 victories in the season to date. Richard has finished second eight times to three for Yarborough, and each man had three third places. Pearson has logged six wins, four seconds, and two thirds. Petty needs only a third place finish to lock up the title. The action today is fierce. Petty in car 43, Yarborough in car 11, Pearson in 21, and Bobby Allison in car 12. It takes 500 miles to decide it. Pearson in front, Yarborough second, and Petty in third. This finish locks up a fifth championship for King Richard the Racer. With his fifth title won, Richard throws open the doors of the Petty compound for an open house celebration that draws nearly 40,000 turned on Petty fans. They come to inspect number 43, the STP Dodge, that was repowered in mid-season to become the most competitive car on NASCAR speedways. They formed a line more than a mile long, waiting patiently to shake the hand and get the flourishing autograph of King Richard, winner of five national championships. No other man has ever won more than three. The fans competed in pit stop contests to emulate the famous Petty crew, and they savored the fall air, which was rich with the flavor of victory at the Petty compound. Richard signed autographs for two solid days as fans trooped through the spotless machine shops where the hot running small block engine was born between races. They visited and inspected and voiced their wonderment and Petty signed autographs at the terminus of a non-stop lineup of fans. They took pictures and Petty posed endlessly. It was a fitting celebration to what was one of the toughest seasons in the long career of America's most successful driver. But one more race remains for King Richard on the 30 race schedule. The Times 500, back in California at Ontario. This race back on the west coast where it all began 11 long months ago is a big one. It's the first Winston Cup event to come under sponsorship of the Los Angeles Times, long an ardent supporter of motorsports. The big guns of the NASCAR circuit are here to race flat out, even though Petty has clinched the title with his Rockingham performance. All the stars are here, including A.J. Foyt, three-time Indy 500 winner, an added starter in bright yellow number 28, Allison in 12, Pearson in 21, Petty in 43, Yarborough in 11, and Baker in 15. They take the green flag and are off and running for a purse of more than $115,000. Petty and Foyt in the front row, Pearson and Allison behind them, followed by Baker and Yarborough, running hard and strong into turn one on the shallow bank track. As they sort themselves out, Petty drops back to fifth as Foyt pushes to the front. Petty is ready to make his move. He's around Yarborough, and as the little Dodge engine turns up faster, he blows off Foyt for the lead. Despite the fact he owns the title, Petty is racing flat out as usual.
Now Lady Luck deserts Buddy Baker. His tires lose their bite, and he smacks the wall at turn four. Yarborough in 11, Baker in 15, Foyt in 28, and Petty in 43 all head for pit stops under the yellow caution flag brought out by Baker's wreck. A slugging pit crew toil with hammers and pry bars to bend enough sheet metal so that Baker can get back out on the track again. Once again, the performance of the pit crews add much to the appeal for the fans, as the men who service the cars work frantically for their drivers. Baker's wreckage now cleared from the track. The green flag signals a return to all-out racing. And Petty, Yarborough, and Foyt scream down the main straight, lined up side by side. The duel goes on for lap after lap. Petty challenged first by Foyt, then by Kale. Dale Inman, Petty's crew chief, smells trouble. Petty comes in showing telltale smoke. And after a brilliant drive, commanding the field, including A.J. Foyt, Petty goes out with a blown head gasket. Allison, running hard late in the race, gets up to take the checkered flag and wins a ticket to victory lane in what's been a long, hard season. And so the year of racing ends for King Richard Petty, winningest driver in NASCAR history. Ten victories, and in the top five, 21 times out of 30 races. His career total, 164 big league victories. A champion's champion. <laughs>